today's demo, we're gonna talk, I've had people ask me a bunch of times about like basics on cross stitch because whenever I finish a cross stitch, I just show it off. Um, so I brought some in that were finished so we could talk a little bit about um, some basic tips. And so then I have um, some basic supplies on today's sale and also a few patterns. The cross stitch patterns that we tend to carry are based around sewing, go fig. Um, and there's, I got a new book in that of course I forgot to put on the sale. Hang on, I've got two new books in that I forgot to put on the sale, so I'll just show them at the end and you can pick them up from the website. Okay, so, have you ever thought about trying cross stitch and you're like, oh no, tiny little X's, I can't see. Or you've tried cross stitch and your thread gets all tangled and weird and you don't know where to start and there's no lines on the fabric and eh. So you can get stamped cross stitch from the craft store. Um, Joann's and Michael's will have pre-packaged kits that the colors are stamped on and then you can copy it. That's a good sort of training wheel option. I always found those frustrating because the stitches never quite covered where the um, stamps were. So you kind of had to guess what, what you were going to stitch on and what you weren't and cross over your threads and stuff. So I always found that to be really annoying because I always wanted it to look right. Um, but I've been doing cross stitch since I was about seven maybe. So it's just sort of a, I don't have to think about it quite as much as if I was learning it now. That being said, the cross stitch that I do now is nothing like what I used to do. Um, I brought in some of my stuff that's probably 20 years old and not finished. And um, I brought in some stuff that I'm currently working on and some stuff that I've recently finished. So cross stitching is just like quilting where every time you do a project, you learn something new and you get a little better. And um, you know, it's one of those skill sets that you just improve on all the time. I still rip stuff, stuff out all the time. I should have brought in my favorite tool. Actually, I sell my favorite tool for ripping out stitches. If you have to rip out a whole section, um, after you get done cursing and drinking, then you need to take it out. And uh, yeah, I've got a technique for that and a I, tool for I, that. I thought you were gonna say, it's just like quilting, you start a project, but you don't finish it. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> There's lots of projects that um, I start and don't finish. And it's just like quilting. If I'm not in love with it anymore, you think I'm going to waste hundreds of hours finishing that thing that I'm not in love with anymore? I give everyone full permission and grace to stop working on projects you're not in love with anymore. Stop putting your energy and your love and your time into something you're not in love with anymore. Whether that be cross stitch or quilting or I, I don't know, your weird cousin. I don't know. Just stop putting energy into stuff that doesn't matter to you anymore. So cross stitch, it counted cross stitch. Now what we're talking about is counted cross stitch, not stamped cross stitch, not pre-designed cross stitch. So I don't even know how old this is. Actually, do you remember in the mid eighties when everybody run around with those sweatshirts on with the half cat faces? You know what I'm talking about, right? They look like this. Do you remember those sweatshirts? So, I mean, my mom had one, my grandma had one. Everybody I knew ran around in sweatshirts that had like these half cat faces on them. They were on posters, they were on everything. It was a very 80s thing. So, however long ago that was, that's probably when I did this. This was also probably one of the first projects I did on linen. So we're gonna talk about the difference between Aida cloth, which is an even weave with very, visible um, holes that you can needle up and down through and and linen so you can buy what's called cross weave and it's cotton but it's evenly woven like this that's probably what this is or you can buy linen which is you know three times more expensive than cotton but for a reason so this is linen this is i actually brought this into the shop so i could um get it ready for the next project i'm going to do and you see how you can see through it. It's very fine, it's very thin. It's mostly even, but linen is made from spinning flax, so it's not as um, uniform as cotton. So you can see how the different fibers are just slightly thicker some places than others. 
that's not a mistake or a deformity in the fabric. It's part of the charm of the fabric. Um, and I'll show you a couple of projects that I have done that you can see how that works, okay? So I'm gonna show you some basics on how to do the thing and then I'm gonna show you some projects that I've been working on. First, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about how I store my stuff. So I brought in a project I'm working on because it's a gift for somebody who does not watch my videos so I don't have to worry about them seeing it. <laughs> um, this is the project. Actually, where's the pattern? I brought the pattern in, it's still in the box. This is the project. I made, th so this was a, this is a twofer set. So this one has the heart and the spade, and then the other one that I already finished has the diamond and the club on it. Um, but this is the pattern. So, well, that's the photograph of the pattern. The way the patterns look, I brought in a couple of different patterns so you could see how varied patterns can be. It's just like with a quilt pattern where some patterns are written really detailed and in full color and, and lots of great math. Cross stitch patterns are the same way. So this is the this is the brand that I'm stitching almost exclusively right now, just because I'm down the rabbit hole and I really like it. These are patterns by Nora Corbett. She's been making patterns for a really long time. Um, this is what the pattern looks like. So it's all one color, and every single little color has a different little symbol. And if you haven't done this before, that can look crazy making. I get that. Um, this looks like, it's kind of like learning a new language and this I can, I can read and make sense out of this. But if I was starting, I probably wouldn't start here. When I was starting to learn to cross stitch, I liked patterns that had colors in them because I found them easier to follow. The other thing you'll find on the pattern is um, a, like a legend, like how maps have legends. This is the legend. So this tells me the different thread colors I'm gonna use. Think of this as like the recipe. These are other things. So the reason that I like Mirabilia patterns is because they have beads and they've got um, metallic thread and, and they have all this like super extra stuff on them. That's what all of these are. But all of these little numbers right here are represented as DMC floss colors. So DMC is kind of like the industry standard as far as what the colors are. There's lots of different brands of floss that you can use. Some are better than others. Um, when you buy that pack to make bracelets with at, at Michael's and it's you know $3 for a pack of 27 of them, don't cross stitch with that. It's, it's okay for doing crafts and it's okay for like tying up your bird feeders and whatever else you use floss for, but it's not something you wanna cross stitch with. Honestly, DMC is probably at the end, at the bottom row of the qualities of different floss that I have, but the color standard is what you start with. So if you're going to use Weeks or you're going to use um, Aurifil or you're going to use another brand that has floss, all of your patterns are probably going to have DMC colors on them. There's plenty of conversion charts you can find online that will tell you the DMC color to the Aurifil color. That's not a problem. Um, I would imagine that DMC probably has the widest variety of colors too. I don't know how many there are. I want to say there's like 300 colors or something. Um, and uh, somebody gave Rebecca a whole box full of them. What? This was maybe six months ago, eight months ago. That whole big box DMC stuff. That's when I gave it to you. Yeah. So she gave it to me. She's like, I don't know what to do with this. Some of that stuff in there, I can promise you, is 50 years old. And I pulled the colors out of the packages and matched them up with the colors that I have currently that I bought in the last year, and they match. So the color consistency is really close. It can fade if it's left out in the sun, and it can, you know, if you don't take care of it well, it's not going to keep up. But these were all kept up pretty well. And um, so, yeah, I took a couple of the colors out of these packages, and you can tell by the packaging how old they are. And I laid them next to each other, and they're the same color. It was crazy. So DMC is kind of this, the color standard. So what I do immediately after I buy my pattern is I take it to Staples and I make um, copies of it that are slightly enlarged. Don't make copies of the pattern, give it to your friend, okay? You are allowed to make copies of the pattern so you can write all over them and, and mess them up. 
So I go to Staples, I print them out on those big like 11 by 14 sheets that are really clear and heavy paper. And then I set them up on, so then I cut them up. And then I make smaller sections that I can see because what I do with mine is when I'm done stitching, I highlight it, okay? So I will tell myself that I've already stitched that. So this is that same pattern that I took to Staples and I made my copy and I spilled coffee on it. Um, also, this right here is my pride and joy. I spent a lot of time looking for the perfect needle minder. This is my needle minder. So it looks like a Victorian brooch, but it's a Kraken <laughs> and it glows in the dark. There are so many layers of awesome right there. I ordered it from a lady in Australia and I'm so, if I ever lose that, I will in fact cry. It? It's a Kraken. Oh, this is called, this is a needle minder. So it's magnetic. So I put this on the front and the magnet on the back of my linen. Oops. And then I drop it on the ground. That'll break it. So it snaps on like a magnet. Yeah, it's like a sew tight. In fact, a lot of people use sew tights as needle minders. So then if I take my needle, my needle will stick on it because it's a magnet. I don't do that often because I have too many like cats and dogs. and So, I mean, it's not like a really stiff thing, but if I have my needle threaded and I just want to set it down real quick, I just stick it on there and it holds it. This one's not quite strong enough to hold my scissors, but the magnet on the back is. So sometimes I'll stick my scissors on there so I don't lose them. I still lose them all the time. There's at least a conversation once an evening about where my scissors are. Or Usually marker. they're under my butt. Um, okay, so <clears throat> rewind. This is a project that I started a long time ago. Some of it's colored and some of it's not. So it kind of helps a little bit to see what's happening. It's shiny, so it's easier to see the print too. But this is just one of those kits that I bought from, I don't know, probably Michael's. And it came with all the thread and the floss. So this is what DMC, or I'm sorry, this is what Aida cloth looks like. This is an old, this is, uh, the last time I really worked on this project, I was on bed rest with, with Jordan, who is now 17. This is also a cautionary tale about how you store your stuff. Jaden was four, the scissors were next to it. So someday I'm gonna finish this and give it to him and I'm gonna leave that hole in it. But this is Aida cloth. So see how it's really, um, the centers are more tightly woven and then you've got these holes in between. Now that I stitch on linen, oh yeah, he cut it there too. Now that I stitch on linen, it's really hard for me to stitch through this because of the way I stitch. I'm gonna show you two different techniques of stitching, one on this and one on that rack that, I'm, that I have for you, okay? This is another thing I do when I organize my threads. I cut out, I'm already making a copy of my pattern, so I cut out my little um, chart that has all my threads, and I tape it to the inside of my box. So it doesn't get messed up and it doesn't come off. And then inside the box is a picture of the project. So when I'm like, wait, is that the right thread color? I can kind of open it and get an idea of where I'm at. Inside here is all the different DMC flosses. This is how I store my floss is on these little floss cards. Not everybody likes that because it kind of leaves a kink in it as you're folding it around the, the um, bobbin. But since I take such tiny stitches, the kinks don't really matter. If I was doing long, flat laying stitches like you do in certain embroidery techniques, this might not be the way you want to store your floss. Okay. Um, that being said, this is how floss works. Just going to pull a color out here. Floss is, I should probably pull one that hasn't already been cut. Do I have one that hasn't already been cut? This is how floss comes. It comes in this skein. There's a number on one end. It's kind of like yarn where you find the end, the end with the number and then you can pull it out and cut off what you need. I, I will mess this up every time. This thing falls off. The cat gets it. It's ugly. Jaden's cat loves these things. If I don't get these wound onto this and in the box fast enough, that little sucker has them all over the house. Okay. So this is how they come. And then I wind them onto these little cardboards. Well, mine are plastic, but they can come cardboard too. So there's six strands in a DMC floss. 
Now there's another brand that I stitch with that's silk and it has 12 strands in it. So depending on what you're stitching and your pattern will tell you if you need one, two, three, sometimes four strands. So I'm gonna pull my thread off. I usually pull off about 12 to 18 inches worth of floss. That's because when I stitch, I double my thread over and I just, as I stitch, I pull my needle up so that I don't double it down. If you're the kind of person that can't pay attention to where the tails are, pull one long piece off, run it through your needle and then match your ends up so that you just keep stitching until you can't stitch anymore and then you cut it. Um, if you can pay attention to where your tails are, then you can, then you can put it like this. So I pull off about how much I'm going to use. I stuff it back in the little holder. I use two strands. There's a couple different ways you can get there. So you can pull two threads off and you can just kind of let gravity spin the bobbin and separate off what you need. Okay. And then you just cut the two that you want, leave the other four on the spool, wrap it back on, then you don't lose it, right? Another way you can get this off, and this works most of the time, sometimes not so much, and if you want to keep it kind of clean, then sometimes this isn't the best way to do this, but you can take the two threads that are at the end, or whichever two you can get to first, and then hold the other four in your hand, and just sort of zhuzh it down so it wads up at the bottom. And then when you cut your thread, take the other four strands that are on here and I just wind them back on the bobbin and I put them back in the box. You'll notice I write the number of the floss on the little card and then in the box, all of my numbers are in numeric order so that when I go to pull out the next one, I know exactly where it is. So this box has DMC in it. It also has some metallic thread. The only way I'm going to sew with metallic thread and Chronix, the brand that I like, is with Thread Magic. I won't even touch this stuff without Thread Magic. It makes me crazy. But it looks so pretty. It's super extra. And Mirabilia has lots of Mill Hill beads on them that come in various different sizes. These suckers are tiny. Um, and these aren't even the smallest ones that I use. So that's everything that's in the box. This is how I organize my project. There's two different ways. Well, there's plenty of different ways. Um, there's plenty of different ways that you can set up your stitching. The two ways that I do typically are either in a hoop. The reason that I have a hard time with a hoop, and it depends on how I'm going to stitch. If I'm going to stitch up and down and up and down and up and down, and you'll see what I, I mean in a minute, then a hoop is a little bit problematic because I've only got one hand. And that's why Aida cloth is hard for me because I like to rock my stitches. Um, but basically when you're doing cross stitch, you're making an X. That's it. That's why it's called cross stitch. So the biggest tip I can give you when you're doing cross stitch is to do the exact same stitch every time. All right, DJ's going to come hold my camera so you can see what I'm doing here. So this is a hoop. I'm going to show you how to hoop a piece of fabric before we get... I know, I'm a little discombobulated because I had a plan, but it fell apart. When you're going to start a project, you want to start in the middle of your project. So for instance, my pattern here has little lines on it. So here's the middle on, the, on this direction, and I cut it off, but there's the middle on that direction. So that's why I always start kind of somewhere right here in the middle. And then I work my way out. So to find your middle, you take your piece of fabric, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. Okay, so here's my middle of my linen. I'm going to take my needle, which I haven't threaded yet. We're going to talk needles in a second too. I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to kind of poke it in the middle. Okay, just leave it like that. That shows me that that's my middle of my piece of fabric. If you get it three or four stitches or, or, or threads this way or that way, it doesn't really matter. That being said, make sure that you give yourself lots of extra fabric. Okay, this project here doesn't quite have enough extra fabric on the sides to get there, but I didn't know what I was doing that well. Okay, so this is a this is the kind of hoop that I usually like. I like wooden hoops, but this is what was on that one. I'm gonna take my piece of fabric and lay it on a table. 
This is kind of like hooping um, embroidery in the in the machine hooping. I'm gonna only only your tightening screw is gonna be on the top. So I'm gonna put my non-tightening screw on the bottom. And I'm gonna put my hoop, my other hoop on the top, okay? You want it to be tight enough that it takes a little bit of force to get it over the edge, but if you have to push hard, then it's too tight. So loosen the screw and then pop it over the edge. Once you get it to here, try to pull your wrinkles out some. You don't wanna to pull too hard because you'll distort the weave of your fabric, okay? So I'm just gonna pull the wrinkles out of my fabric here and then I'm gonna tighten my screw. You don't have to tighten it so tight that you can't get it back off, just finger tighten it. Okay, and now since I've put my needle through, I know where my middle is. Okay. Now there's two ways, this is a piece of linen. So when I'm stitching on linen, I stitch over two threads. When I'm stitching on Aida, I stitch from one hole to the other. So this is Aida cloth that I just took the hoop off. When I'm stitching Aida cloth, and some people st stitch without a hoop at all, and that's fine. If you can do that, then more power to you. You always want to make your stitch match the one next to it. So I have a very habitual stitch, which is to go up from the left side down on the right, and then up on the right and down on the left. I know that seems like a really minute thing, but your stitches will look much more uniform and even if you have this have the thread on the bottom going the same way every time. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up and down and up and down. Now, I don't usually stitch like this. I usually do what's called the sewing method and I rock my stitches. So I will bring my needle up, put it down in the hole I wanna go down in, and then come up in the next space. So it's, I think it's probably because I'm a quilter, it's more like a quilting stitch, okay? This is just the way that I have learned to cross stitch. This is easier to do if you have a hoop because you don't have to go up and down and you can hold the hoop. I very rarely use a hoop anymore. I almost exclusively use stretcher bars, okay? So that's the difference. I ate a cloth, you stitch from hole to hole to hole to hole. Linen, you stitch over two stitches. So if this is the center part, and I know it is because I put my needle in it, and I bring my thread up, I'm gonna show you how to tie off your ends. I'm gonna bring my thread up most of the way, and then I'm gonna go down in the space that I need to go down in. When I stitch on linen, I cross two threads instead of one. So here would be one thread, okay? Here is two threads. I know that sounds crazy, but once you've done it a few times, you can't see it any other way. I bring my thread up. There are multiple ways to tie off your ends. This is just the way that I do it. I bring my thread down till it's about a half an inch long. I know my next stitch is gonna start here So I take that, that tail and I just loop over it like that, okay? So now it's stuck down. When you rock stitch on linen, it's the same stitch, right? So I'm gonna go from the top left to the bottom right. And then since I'm gonna rock my stitches, I just rock them up to the top, okay? This is a 34 count linen. What that means is there's 34 threads in every square inch. So the higher the thread count, the smaller the stitches need to be, okay? So this is basic cross stitch. There's lots of other X's and symbols and Things you can do, you can add all kinds of things to it. Like I showed you mine have beads on them and metallic thread and all that good stuff. But this is a basic cross stitch. So it's counted. So what that means is if I'm going to stitch this space right here, and this is my pink thread, 
and I'm going to stitch five up and then I'm going to stop because this changes to a different color and then next to it I'm going to stitch the same pattern. So you follow the pixelated grid to match the colors that you're making. Again, this is not where you should start, but I do have some good patterns to start with. This is how I stitch when I'm at home. I've got stretcher bars that, well, has cat hair on it now, because cats. These are stretcher bars. So what I did was at the beginning of the project, I'll un untighten them, you can untighten these screws and these roll open and I have actually stapled or you can sew your linen to these leaders. And then as you tighten the leaders, it looks like a scroll and the design gets tighter and then you can stitch on it. So if you're going to do the stitching where you're gonna go up and down and up and down, this is easier because you can push the needle up from behind and then bring it back down from the front. Okay, so if you're gonna make your X's, and especially if you're kind of new to this and new to stitching with um, stretcher bars, this is a good way to start. Now typically when I stitch, I rock stitch from the front and I put my hand underneath so I can kind of push the fabric up. Again, like I said, since I've been doing this for such a long time, I just see where the holes are. I don't have to really look for them. And I can make, I can make stitches without even really thinking about it. But I didn't learn how to stitch on, on linen. I learned how to stitch on Iata cloth and I learned how to do this when I was like seven years old. So if you're going to learn how to cross stitch, I fully recommend that you start on Iata cloth. And then I also recommend a couple of different products that make this a whole lot easier. So if we're looking at this pattern, this is the one that I've started stitching, right? Here's the picture. So see, this is her bodice right here. This is the bodice to her dress right here. All of these spaces are left open because I'm gonna add beads there later. Isn't she pretty? Okay, so those are the basics kind of how to, how to. A couple of other tips that I have for you is before you start stitching on something, it's really important to prepare your fabric. This stuff frays so much worse than quilting cotton wool because the weave is so much thicker. So I had already prepare, prepared this for doing um, another one of these. I already measured out the size that I need. My design was like eight by 12. So I made a piece of linen that was 16 by 39. So I've not 39, 19. So I've got lots of extra space around my design to get where I need to be. Make sure you give yourself lots of space. The reason for that will show up when you, um, when you frame it and I'll show you when, with some frame stuff. Are you leaving? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Um, I'll show you one that's done and not framed. I'd run this through my serger. And if you order any linen from us, this is how you're gonna get it, is run through the serger. If you don't have a serger, my, I highly recommend using pink tape. I looked everywhere for something that I had used masking tape on, because most of my old designs, I did masking tape because I didn't know any better. And all of them are yellow all the way around because masking tape is not acid-free. Painter's tape is not acid-free. It will leave stains. That being said, that's why you need a big enough piece that no matter what you put out here to hold your fabric together, you're not gonna see it once you get it framed, okay? Because you don't wanna see the tape. If you use the, um, if you use this technique where you've put it through the serger, it's nice and soft. So if you have to roll it up in your hand, it rolls up really nice. So this is a project that I just finished. I took it to the framers two weeks ago. I've got it all laid out on the framers table. And as he's doing the measurements around the edge, I realized that she's missing beads right here. She has no beads on her, on the front of her bodice of her dress right here. So she's supposed to have these purple beads on here. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to take this home with me and I'll bring it back. So this is one that I've just finished. 
you'll see that there's lots of extra space on the sides. This is even still a little bit narrow. If I had planned this out just a little bit better, I would have probably given myself another two, two and a half inches on both sides over here. Since I'm taking it to a professional framer, they can work around this for me. And then when I get my stuff framed, I have them put a layer of batting underneath before they put it in the frame because mine have all these crazy beads on them. So I'll show you some that are framed so you can see why you want to have batting in the frame. I was hoping to save all my mess and then everybody saw my mess. So this is actually the one that hangs up in the bathroom here at the shop. Or supposed to. No, it does. Um, see how all the beads... This is under glass. I always get a UV protective glass so that the sun doesn't bleach it out. See how the batting keeps the beads kind of even with the rest of the stitching? So it's been stretched, it's been put on there properly, and then it has batting underneath. And that covers a couple of sins. One, it keeps the beads kind of pushed up to the front without them looking like they're concaved into it. And two, um, so traditionally speaking, the back of your stitching should look as pretty as the front of your stitching. And well, we don't need to talk about the backs of my stitching. So when you put it on a mat board and you put the batting behind and whatever, if there's little threads that I've used to travel with, they get hidden in the batting as well. I try not to do that, especially in these places where the beads come down a lot, but sometimes you, ha you just really can't help it. Sometimes there's just no way around it. So this is the, this is the cross stitch we have that hangs up in the bathroom. And then this is the one that hangs up in our bedroom. This was my first COVID project. Um, and can I just tell you, I have never paid so much for framing in all my life, but it was worth it because this sucker has crazy hours in it. This also has the batting behind it and all that sort of stuff, but this is a big project. Probably my favorite one I've ever done. So this is a really good example. Remember I said in linen, we, we stitch two threads across, across two threads. If you look at her skin, her skin is stitched one thread across one thread. That's why her skin looks a lot more natural than the mermaid did. So if you look at how her skin, I can shade in. She's supposed to be Russian, so she's very pale. Um, you can see in her skin is very detailed in the tiny little stitches. When you look at the mermaid, I hadn't learned that technique yet. So yeah, she's pretty, but her skin isn't nearly as pretty as that one. So see how kind of chunky her skin looks in comparison? So yes, I've been doing this since I was seven years old. But I learned something new between this one and that one, and that was stitching the skin like that. And now I stitch all the skins like that. Okay, if you have questions, I will try to look at them, um, but we're gonna talk about some other products and whatnot too. Yeah, see, here's the back. We don't need to talk about how messy my back is. You should have shown that. I got no shame. I don't do shame. Yeah, Patty makes a good point. She says, you have to think about how you're going to want something framed before you do it. Because, so like this one, I went to take this one to the framer and the frame I wanted, I couldn't use because there wasn't enough depth in the thickness of the frame. Because by the time you wrap this around a mat board and then bat it and then mat it and then there's the, the beads to take into consideration, I had to buy a, um, a frame that was much deeper than the one I chose to begin with. So there's this whole other extra thing that goes into the, to the framing process. If you live local and you need a framer, we have a fantastic framer here in Weaverville and she's done magic with, I should say they, there are a couple, they have done magic with my framing stuff. So she's very good. They are very good. Um, Sue, so I'm not sure if I would call it a new trend. Uh, Mirabilia's have been around for probably maybe 20 years. 
I think she's just getting a little more popular now because um, her stuff is so much more detailed than a lot of what's out there. I brought some other patterns to show you guys too, like what the difference in patterns look like. So like this is a book that I have that is actually um, in German and it's got, it's got hedgehogs. My friend brought me this back when she went to Germany. Um, so this is, I wanted to show you the difference between a black and white pattern and a colored pattern. So this pattern is colored. So especially if you're new to cross stitch, a colored pattern might be helpful because you can maybe see it a little bit better. Plus when they're two different colors, you can really see the grid lines behind it. Notice on the grid lines that every 10th line is darker than the rest. That helps you count. So, you know, especially when you're doing spaces that have lots and lots of stitching and a lot of big spaces, you can kind of, you know, look and see, oh, there's 10 and then count three more or whatever it is. So this is what it looks like when the pattern has color. So for some people, it's a lot easier to see. Some people hate this because they learned on these kind of patterns and so they find the color to be confusing. A lot of patterns that you buy online now, because you can buy patterns and download them, um, will come either color or black and white. And I brought some of those to show you. Um, I love, I mean, y'all know I love nerdy cross stitch like this one. And I just haven't found these in actual print in the store. Anybody Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fans? Yeah, I'm making this one for myself at some point. The thing is, these ones that I have in my nifty little folder here are not quite as um, involved as what I normally like to do. Um, I made this one for my friend after she got done with cancer. See, it's all really fancy and it's got roses and words on it and it's all very elegant. But it says, um, I love that I'm with you. I don't have to pretend to be a nice person. That shit's exhausting. So I made it for her after she got done with her cancer treatments because, you know, she deserved it. Um, so I've got lots of different options, but I wanted to show you one that is in both color and black and white, but now I don't see it. Uh, oh, here's one. Okay. So you get the point. This one I downloaded or I bought from a woman and then she customized it to have our names on it. So this one is color. It's a little big in print for me. The print is a little big. It's kind of hard to follow but she customized it with our name and anniversary date on it. So this is gonna be fun. So there's lots of different ways you can get patterns, lots of different options. This one's gonna be a dragon when it's done. Again, since I'm used to the black and white options, the colors kind of freak me out a little bit. But once I just work on them for a little bit, I can get used to them. The last thing I wanted to show you was a pattern by Nicola Parkman. She does true recreations of um, old cross stitch and embroidery samplers. Like she researches the person who stitched them. She recolorizes them after the fading. So like this one is based on us. It's a band sampler from 1680. So this is a pattern I bought from her last time she was in town and I can't wait to do it, but I'm a little afraid of it. I'm gonna be honest. At some point I will get down to this, but you know, it's a pretty crazy pattern. Patterns come in all different ways. Find the thing that works for you and go with it. All right, now let's talk about the stuff we've got. What I did was I made a kit based around this project because I figure most people who are on here like a sewing machine, okay? Um, I also wanna show you an edit to this. This is a pattern by Lori Holt, and it says uh, she believed she could, so she did. I don't believe that only women sew. So this would be very easy to take off the S and change to an H there and there, but look how cute this pattern is. So I've also kitted this to make it easy for you, and I have two different kinds of fabric. Can you buy? Hey, guys. This is my daughter, Aubrey. Say Hi. And that was the boyfriend that ghosted Lee walked past a minute ago. You've got kissy lips on your face now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I worked around this. Oh, they're all specialty stitches on this sampler. So here's the other thing that I learned from Nicola was how to do truly reversible cross stitch. 
like where the front looks the same as the back. And when we used to have the cross stitch store next door, she had this stitched out as a sampler with two sided glass. So you could see the front and then you could see the back. And it was the most amazing thing I think I've ever seen. I don't think I care enough to do it like that. I just want it to look pretty from the front. But yeah, I've actually seen this stitched out where the two sides um, are interchangeable. So yeah, see, this is up close. This has bullion stitches and satin stitches and all kinds of stitching on it. It is a beautiful design. I've got a half a dozen or so of her patterns and I'm, I'm a little freaked out to start them, but I will. So, okay. So what I did to do the sample is I gave you, I was going to kit it all together with the fabric and the thread and the pattern and the, all the things. But in order to let you have the option, if you wanted to stitch on IATA or you wanted to stitch on 32 count linen. Now remember 32 count in linen or an even weave is half that number in IATA because you're stitching over two. So 32 count linen is going to be 16 count IATA cloth. Okay. So if you hear that and you think, oh my God, I got to put 32 stitches in a square inch. No, you only got to put 16. The IATA cloth that I have is 18 count. So you can see that it's not that they're pretty big. It's not the biggest IATA cloth out there, but it's a good, um, it's a good size to start without it being really big and chunky. So like Aubrey, the one who was just here, she's like, hey, I need a needle threader, which she forgot. It's sitting up there on the counter. Um, she's like, cause I started cross stitching again. So, which, <laughs> yay. Cause if I, if I ask her to cross stitch, then she's not going to, but she's starting to cross stitch again. So I started her out on Iota cloth. So the thing she's working on now is stitched on linen. Okay. So this is 18 count Iota cloth, but see the gray lines that are on here? So this is kind of like cheater, cheater grid, right? So remember I showed you that 10, every 10 square was double highlighted or double thickness. Every 10 squares on this is gray. So what you do with this is when you're all done and your stitching is all finished, you lay it in lukewarm water for, I don't, the directions are on the website exactly how long you laid in there, but you lay it in there and then the watercolor, the gray dissolves out of it. And then you can either block your design or let it air dry. Um, so this is like training wheels for learning to cross stitch. So what I did was I made chunks of this, the right size to stitch this, which this finishes stitching out about eight by 10. So I gave you a chunk that was 14 by 18 of both the Iota cloth and the linen, okay? So number 100 on the count up there is a chunk of this 18 count Iota cloth. It is 14 by 18. So you can decide your fabric and then I've put together the rest of the kits. Number 101 is the linen. This is called optic white. It is like white, okay? Um, this is linen, so it does have those little bits of variations in it. This is also going to be 14 by 18. Linen's more expensive, so this is about twice as much, but it's a lot softer. And the way I always think about a thing is if you want to learn how to do it, you might as well learn how to do it and go ahead and do it the, you know, the more advanced way. And then you won't know any different. So this is 14 inches by 18 inches it is optical white linen. We did not talk about needles because I forgot. I brought two sets of needles up here, which now I've lost because you saw how messy my table was. These are my go-to needles. These are the needles I use to stitch everything. I use a size 26 because it matches my linen really nicely. That's what I threaded this pink thread on. I wanna show you my favorite feature to these needles is that they're ball tipped. See how that tiny little end of the needle has a tiny little ball point tip on it. This does two things. One, I don't poke myself. Two, when you're stitching through linen and you're trying to get through that tight weave, the ball point stops you from splitting the fibers. So it's easier to get up through the space that you want to be in because the ball point separates the fibers instead of splitting them. I use a size 26 needle. It's just my favorite one because it's easy to put two threads through or two, um, two strands of floss through. So this is my go-to. It's also a nice um, training wheel needle because it's not very sharp. It's the only real cross-stitch supplies we carried in the store and I sell out of them constantly. Everybody loves them. If you would rather do something slightly larger, I do have an embroidery needle 
combo pack. These are sharper. They do not have the ballpoint tip. So if you're more accustomed to or would rather have a sharp needle, these are embroidery needles. So if you're gonna stitch on regular fabric, these are the different options you have. So these have four different sizes in them, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You can see that the eye is plenty big enough to see. So you can get two, two strands of thread through there, okay? But it has a sharp point tip. So this is a good option too. So this is a um, embroidery combo needle pack, if you will. These are tulip needles. So they come, I believe, six in a pack. Those are number 103. Then we have this really groovy um, cross-stitch key, which is relatively new on the market. It's a reference guide, so it has all kinds of things on it. So if you want to measure and make sure that you have two and a half inches away from the corner of your project before you start stitching, instead of maybe you don't start, want to start in the middle. Maybe you're doing a border around it. And you want to start in one corner, but you want to make sure that you have enough room from the corner. You can measure it from here with your corner guide. This is just a standard ruler, so you can kind of frame things up. This is a, is a um, cloth counter. So you can lay this on your cloth and see, so like if you, if the little label fell off of whatever you're using, whatever you're about to stitch on, and you, it's important to know what size the fabric is so you can gauge how big it's gonna end up. Remember we said this was 18 count cloth. If you take your stitch guide and you lay it on the cloth, the stitch guide will line up to the holes on the cloth. So if you pull this out of a box or somebody gives you some something or you lose the label, you can pull this, this handy little tool out and know exactly what size your stitch, your um, counter cloth is. And then there was another thing. Oh, this also helps you out with needle sizes and thread counts. So this is your cross stitch key. It's a pretty handy little tool to have. I've got one that's wooden that I've had for years that I really love. If you're gonna stitch metallic thread, Thread Magic is the way to go. I'm in a couple of cross stitch groups on Facebook and most of them are self-taught or, or just bought some stuff from the craft store and they're like, oh my God, I'm sewing a metallic thread and I think I wanna shoot myself. First thing I tell them is throw away the stuff you bought at Michael's and buy the Krynic. Then I tell them to pick this stuff up because if you run this through that, the stitches just lay so much flatter and they don't fray and it's just, it's so much better. So that's Stitch Magic. If you want to tape down the edges of your cross stitch, Embroidery Perfection Tape is the way to go. It's gonna stick and it's not gonna, um, it's not gonna stay sticky and it's not gonna mess up the edges of your fabric. Then we didn't really talk hoops too much because um, I prefer a wood hoop most of the time. I had a plastic hoop on this one that I haven't pulled out for 17 years, but this is a nice wooden hoop. It's eight inches, so it's, it's good for any size project you're gonna work on. It has nice beveled edges, so it's soft, and it has a finger tightening screw on it. So these are bamboo. It's an eight inch hoop. It's number 107. So if you're gonna stitch and you don't have stretcher bars, you, wanna, you want a decent hoop. Now, if you want to make little projects and then you want to hang them on the wall or you want to make Christmas ornaments, you want to hang them on the tree, these are three and a half inches. These are by Kimberbell, so they're meant to put uh, machine embroidery in, but they're the perfect size for making tiny little stitches or cross stitches. Tie a ribbon around it, hang it from a tree, hang it on the wall. It, you could just use it to frame it. It doesn't even matter. These are adorable, and there's two in this package for 10 bucks. Then we have two patterns to show you. The first one, so we're all, remember row by row and we love, love doing like row quilts? This is sew by row. So it's got lots of different little sewing um, accoutrements, each stitched in a row. I don't have all of the threads to bunt to kit this, but if you like the pattern, um, I can, I'm happy to order all the threads in. I just don't have them all in, in right now. I've got about half of them. This finishes, if you use that Aida cloth that I have, this finishes about nine by 12. It's a very cute one. But the one we really wanted to show you is this one that says, so she did on it, because this has a lot of fun things happening. Not only is it a sewing machine and sewing tools and a nice message, but you also get these tiny little buttons, not with the pattern, but with the kit. See those little buttons that are supposed to be the dials on your machine? Isn't that cute? 
I also love how the thread runs off the machine and kind of just spools around all over the place and the cord is adorable. So here's the pattern is number 110. Okay. What I did was then I bundled all the floss that you need to make this project. The floss and the buttons to make this project are in here. So if you want to make this and you don't have anything, you need the pattern, you need to choose which fabric, you need the floss kit that has the floss and the buttons in it. Okay. And you'll need some needles and a hoop. So that one's number 111. If you would rather just have everything already in the bucket, I have a handful of these um, embroidery kits. I only have a, I only have three, but these are also by Mill, by Mill Hill. They're the ones that make the tiny little beads. These have beads on them. This one doesn't have metallic thread, but this one does. Yeah. Um, so this makes this cute little bird. It finishes five by five or six by six. So the eight by eight hoop is perfect for this. It has linen, it has floss, it has beads, and there's even a needle in this package. So this is a really good way to get started if you're not sure, because all you need besides this is a hoop. So this makes the, um, what is this? The Christmas purple dove. It also comes as a Christmas puppy. And he's got metallic along his face and he's got beads on top of his head. Um, we didn't talk about how to set beads, but if anybody needs help, knowing how to do that I can help you these are all Laurel Birch designs that's the Christmas puppy and then the last one is the Christmas and dog um, Christmas cat and dog so it's both cat and a dog there's no metallic thread in this one but there are really cute little beads and all of these finish uh, five by five or six by six and they will work with an eight by eight, by an eight inch round hoop okay all right I think that's everything I have oh no I forgot to talk about my favorite embroidery scissors which are the the squeezy snips because I like the angled tip and I can just squeeze them so I don't have you know I'm usually laying in bed when I'm doing this so I don't have to get my fingers in little holes to pick up my stitches so this is my favorite scissors for doing this the two things I forgot to put on the sale but you can pick up on the website is the feminist cross stitch handbook there's some really snarky stuff in here it's good um, there's lots of different cross stitch patterns in here and these are very good for beginners these are easy to start with for beginners and then there is also cross stitch for the soul there are 20 patterns in here that are really great um, sort of mantras that you can stitch up and frame it wouldn't take a crazy amount of time these are these are still beginner projects okay so both of those books are over on the website I know I talked a long time today I apologize but if you have questions about any of this stuff or um, you can, if you follow me on Instagram, usually whenever I finish a project, I post a picture over there. Um, if you like those patterns with the, um, with the beads on them, I have a lot of the patterns. I'm, I'm happy to order you one. If there's one that you want or supplies that you want, I'm happy to get you anything that you need. It's not really the specialty of our store, but I do order all of my pearl cottons from the same company that makes them so I can get the ones you want. So, all right. So I hope you guys learned stuff. I hope I made cross stitch more appealing instead of less. I hope you're in, enticed to try it. And um, let me know if you have questions on anything. All right, so Wednesday sale is gonna be a, I think it's a skinny bolt sale. I have to look, but I'm pretty sure it's a skinny bolt sale. So I will see you guys on Wednesday. I hope you have a nice night. See you later.